Okay, this is day two of our circles. And so there's different kind of angles that we're going to talk about today. And the main angle that we're going to talk about is called the central angle. And the central angle is an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle. Okay, this right here is a central angle because that is the center of the circle and that is my angle. Okay, a minor arc is part of the circle measuring less than blank. So a minor arc is an arc that measures less than uh, 180 degrees. So it's less than like half of the circle. So this right here is a minor arc. And then a major arc is a part of the, part of the circle that measures between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. So that would be considered a major arc. So the major arc, one of the big things is a minor arc is labeled by two letters. So a minor arc would be AB with a little arc sign over top of it. And a major arc would have to have three letters. So instead of this just being labeled as AB, the way that you know that it's a major arc is because it goes, uh, when you go to look at it, it goes A, then it goes through D, and then it goes to B. And, ooh, and that is greater than 180. So a major arc has three letters. That's how you can tell the difference. A semicircle is half. It's an arc with endpoints formed by a diameter. Okay, so a semicircle and the notation named by the endpoints and another point. So the semicircle is labeled like a major arc. So it also has three letters and then the arc sign. Okay, so as we go to do this. It says the measure of the arc is not the same as the length of the arc. So what we had been talking about is we had been talking about the length of the arc, which is kind of like the circumference and then the fraction of the part. The measure is always going to be in degrees. Okay. So the measure of an entire circle equals 360 degrees. The measure of a semicircle, which is half of it, is equal to 180. The measure of a minor arc is the measure of its central arc. So if I look at arc RS, this is arc RS, so the measure of RS is the central angle, so it's going to be 45 degrees. The measure of a major arc is the difference between 360 and the measure of the related minor arc. So if we look at, and I try to label these, RTS, so if we look at R RTS, that arc is going to be 360 oops, minus 45. <clears throat> so 360 minus 45, that's going to give me 315 degrees. So this one's going to be 315 degrees. Arc addition is the measure of an arc formed by two adjacent. Adjacent means that they're side by side. Side by side is that the sum of the measures of two arcs. So adjacent arcs share a common endpoint. So the measure of ABC, so if we went ABC is arc AB plus arc BC. So you take AB, whatever that is, add it to BC. Congruent circles, two con Two circles with the same radius. Congruent arcs are two arcs with the same measure, and they are arcs of the same circle or congruent circles. Okay. So name the arc shown in bold. So this little arc shown in bold, it is a minor arc. So that little arc is going to be arc AB. You could also write it as arc BA. Number two. The arc that is here is going to be arc ADB. It has to be labeled with three because it's a major arc. and Or it can do, be BDA. The D has got to be in the middle because that tells us what direction it's going. Number three is a semicircle. So a semicircle, we are going to use three letters. So it's going to be PSQ or it can be QSP. The P has got to be in the middle. 
So if we want to decide if AB is congruent to CD. So we're looking at AB, and then we have CD. And basically, this is a central angle. The arc going with it is going to be 65 degrees. Here, same thing. That's going to be 65 degrees. So decide that is yes because their central angles are the same. So they would be congruent to each other. Now, what it's basically saying, though, the angle measure is equal. But if we found the angle or the arc length, the arc length of these two circles would not be the same because this has a radius of 12 and this has a radius of 10. And if you were going to find the arc length, you would do 65 over 360. That is the part you're trying to find. And then you would do times 2 times pi times 12, where over here you would do 65 over 360 times 2 times pi times 10. That's obviously, this one is obviously going to be smaller if you look at the arc length. Uh, decide if AB is congruent to CD. So we have AB and we have CD. Now, what we do know about this, we're trying to see if they're equal. We do know that this, this right here is a semicircle because this goes through the center. So that is a diameter. So that's going to be a semicircle. So what you'd have to do is say 63 plus 54, which is going to give us 117. And then we would take 180, which is that whole thing, minus 117. And that's going to give me, if I borrow from that, that does give me 63. So yes, they are equal. And when it says to explain what I just did right there, that, that math, I can understand what you're doing when you do that math. Decide if AB is congruent to CD. So AB and CD. Well, first of all, here are their central angles. Their central angles are equal because if you think back when we did the um, quadrilaterals or any kind of angles, these are vertical angles. So you will see vertical angles in circles, and vertical angles are always congruent. Okay, so let's look at this one. And you can pause it if you want to and see if you can find all of these different things and then come back. So in this is how we represent circle zero. M, Q, and N are our diameters. Okay, now one way that you can tell that things are diameters, even if it doesn't say it, is if it goes all the way across the circle and it goes through the center. Okay, so we have all these different things and it asks us what the arc of N, P is. Well, here's N, P. So this is a central angle, so NP is equal to 80 degrees. QN. So if I wanted to figure out what QN is, QN kind of like extends it just a little bit. And so in order to find QN, we've got to find this angle. Well, this whole side is 180. So we could do 180 and 60 plus 80. 60 plus 80, we can add that together. And this is kind of like the work that you would need to see, or I would need to see. So 8 plus 6 is going to give me 14. So if we subtract those two, we get that this little piece right here is 40. So if we want to find QN, we would add 40 plus 80, which is 120. MPQ. So if we wanted to find MPQ, so we're continuing on. MPQ is half of that, so MPQ is going to be 180 degrees. Now, I'm going to erase some of these little pieces because when I go to say what things are, I kind of like to like outline them. So MQN, so if we looked at MQ, we're going around, and N, we're going to hear so basically, this is our minor arc. So we could basically say 360 minus 60. So that's going to give me 300. Again, I would pause it and see if you can get the answer. Also, if you write down the notes, remember you can get extra credit. Uh, the measure of QR. So if we do the measure of QR, QR, we know that this is 40 because we found it before. And all of the 
all of these all go together. It's not separate like we did the rectangles. And then QR, we need to find this little piece right here. So if this is 60, this is also 60 because they are uh, vertical. So we would add 60 plus 40, and 60 plus 40 is 100 degrees. Then we have PR. So if we wanted to find PR, wait, where's QR? Ah, I did that wrong. QR is actually equal to 60, which I found. So that would be 60, and then I already did the other one. So that's going to be 60, and then PR, which would be this one, that's when we would add those together, and we would get 100 degrees. And then PMQ, so if we want to look at PMQ, PMQ is a long way around. I know I'm not going to draw a really good circle, but uh, it's all the way around here, so we're going to go PMQ. So this is our um, minor arc, so basically we could do 360 minus 40, and that's going to give me 320. So that arc is, ah, 320 degrees. All right, so let's look at a couple other ones that you'll see. So basically what happens here, we know that this side is equal to 180 degrees. We know that if this is x, this is also x because they are vertical. So the whole thing is 180. So we can basically say 67. Actually, what I would do is 180 minus 80 is going to be 100. So we could do 100 minus 67. So if we do 100 minus 67, that's going to give me a 3. And then you can borrow. Kind of remember that. And so that's going to give me 33 degrees. So if that's 33 degrees, this is also 33 degrees. Uh, number nine, <coughs> it says find the value of x. Well, if this little piece says that it's 90 degrees, then this is also going to be 90 degrees. The entire side over here is going to be 180. So if the entire thing is 180, then we get that this is 90, so we can add it all together. So if this is 3x, kind of see this little um, this little tick mark right here? If this is 3x, this is also 3x. So basically we're going to have 3x plus 3x plus 90. We can add those together so we get 6x. Subtract 90, so we get 6x is equal to 90. And I know most of you will pull out your calculators, but we can do this. 1 times 6 is 6. Subtract, bring down the 0. So that gives me that x is equal to 15. Okay, kind of like using your logic here. Uh, now these are kind of going to be like your homework. If we want to know what this angle is, if the arc is 120, the angle is 120. Also, you can pause this and try them. If this is 123, the, uh, the angle is 123, the arc is also 123. I'm kind of going a little bit fast. Uh, so we want to find CFD. So if we want to find CFD... And we want to go all the way around. Well, first of all, um, we know that 35 plus whatever this is is 180. So we can do 180 minus 135. So if we do 180 minus 135, that's going to give me 5. That's going to give me a 45 degree angle. So if that's 45 degrees, this is also 45 degrees. And we also know that this little piece right here is 180. So you're going to do 180 plus 45 plus 81. So we're going to get 6. That's going to be 16 plus 4 is going to give me 20. So that's going to give me 306. The measure of angle SPQ. So if we want to find out SPQ, that's this angle right here. Um, we know that this is 60, this is 154. So we're going to add those together. So you get 154 plus 60, plus 86, so that's going to give me uh, 6 and 6 is 12, plus 8 is 20. That's going to give me 300, so we know that all of that is 300. So if all of that is 300, we know that um, we're going to find SPQ, right, SPQ. So we know that this would be 60 
and then this little part right here, or that would be 86, and this little piece right here would be what's left once we added all those together. So 86 plus 60, 86 plus 60, I actually think it's hiding under this little blue thing. Ah, 146. So then we have this one. So if we want to find EFC, so we want to find EFC, which is this part right here. No, wait. Measure of, ah, oh, it's the arc, sorry. We want to find EFC going around this way. That's right. EFC. Well, first of all, we know that these two are going to be equal to 180. So we can do 180 minus 126. So that's going to be 54 degrees. So if this is 54 degrees, this is also going to be 54 degrees. We also know that that's 180, so it's going to be 180 plus 54. And 180 plus 54 is 234. Here we're going to find the measure of I, I, M, I, J, and this is an angle, so make sure you know this is an angle, this is an arc. Oops. So M, I, J, so if I do M, I, J, we know that this is 55, so we can figure this one out by saying 180 minus 55, and so 180 minus 55 is going to give me 125. Okay, this is where it gets kind of kind of cool, and I kind of pulled a little algebra into there. So it says solve for x. Assume that the lines appear to be diameters are actually diameters. So if we know that this is 140, then we should know that this is 180, so this is going to be 40. So we can sit, set that up as 6x minus 8 is equal to 40. Then we're going to have 6x is equal to 48. So x is going to be equal to 8. And that should be my answer. Over here, we know that these together are going to be 180 degrees. They're equal because they both have a little, um, same little stash mark. So this is going to be 90. So then we have x plus 93 is equal to 90. So we get x is equal to negative 3. And we can see that right doop, there. Okay, so then we get a little bit harder. So basically what we know here, it says, find the measure of the arc or central angle indicated. Assume that the lines which appear to be diameters are actually diameters. And the way that you can tell that something is a diameter is if it goes across the circle and it goes through the center. Now we know if this is 5x plus 10, we also know that this is 5x plus 10. And if you look at this, these are vertical angles. So basically we get 12x minus 2 is equal to 2 times 5x plus 10. And then we're going to solve that, which is like, um, and then we should get 50 degrees. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to kind of set you, help, you, help you set up the equation. We know that these two are equal to each other, so this would also be negative 27x minus 3. And if we go all the way around the circle, we basically have negative 37x plus 2, negative 27x minus 3, and negative 27x minus 3. And all of that, all the way around, is going to be equal to 360. So we're going to basically add all that together and set it equal to 360. And when you do that, you should get that x is equal to, um, oh, you find out your x, and then you're going to plug it back in. Same thing with this one over here. You find out what your x is, and then you're going to find wv, the arc wv. So on this one, let's kind of get back to this. This would be 12x minus 2. This would be 10x plus 20. So if we... So, solve that, it's going to be 2x is equal to 22, so x is going to be equal to 11. So basically we know that this whole thing is equal to 180. So if we put 11 into there, that's going to be 12 times 11 minus 2. So 12 times 11 is 132 minus 2, 
So this is going to be 130, and since that's 180, that's going to be 50. Um, so over here, if we add everything together, it's going to be negative 6 plus 2, which is going to be negative 4. And then we have 37 plus 27 plus 27. So that's going to be negative 91x. So we're going to have negative 91x minus 4 equals 360. So then we're going to have negative 91x is equal to 364. Then we're going to have 364 divided by 91, or negative 91. And so we're going to get that x equals negative 4. So then it asks us to find VST. So if we want to find VST, we're going to take that negative 4 and we're going to plug it in. So we get negative 27 times negative 4 minus 3. Well, 27 times 4 is going to give me 108, and 108 minus 3 is 105. Okay, hopefully that helps. This is going to be Friday's lesson.